Generosity and service, I think, are fundamental components of the faith tradition that I was raised in, which is Christianity. Um, and with that is the responsibility to take seriously the teachings, uh, not so much in terms of uh, being good or uh, being pure or being holy, but in doing the things uh, that, that we are called by our sacred scriptures, both Old Testament or Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, um, that we're called to do, to follow and do the sorts of things that Jesus himself did. Um, so it's inescapable. Um, you, there's, there's the mantra of time, talent, and treasure, uh, which are three resources at our command. Uh, but there's also love, service, and devotion, which are three categories of action. Uh, and, and it's not that one is more important or less important, uh, but they're all important. Uh, so the shelter has been, uh, for many, many years now, a, a, a central part of my life, of our family's life, uh, and is a, provides a, a wonderful forum for addressing love and service and devotion. One of the Proverbs, I think, speaks eloquently of that. If you, if you oppress the poor, the scripture says, you are blaspheming God. Uh, but kindness shown to the poor is an act of worship. And I, I find that proverb to be very significant in, in my life, in, in my life at the shelter itself. I went to school for 22 years, which is a long time to be in school. Um, and much of that time I worked full-time to pay to go through school. So it was all-consuming just to support myself and take care of my studies and address those responsibilities and commitments that I had made. When I finally finished school and had done a postdoctoral at the University of California, San Diego. I moved to San Francisco to work at Letterman Army Medical Center. And there I had some exposure uh, to working with the homeless, uh, friends uh, who lived in sort of a California-style Eastern Christian blended community uh, would uh, house uh, in 10% of the apartments they had, they would 10% were for housing the homeless. And so I had that first exposure there. When I moved to Atlanta, I knew no one, uh, had no friends, and uh, was looking for uh, some way to fit in and express my values, my principles, my beliefs, and found in a church bulletin um, the announcement that Central Night Shelter was open and needed volunteers. And since I had nothing to do nights and weekends, uh, I took it up and I never looked back. It's definitely had profound effects on me. One of the things I've gained from people who are homeless that stay with us at the shelter, and in the early years we took men, women, and children, uh, some of these people have more faith than I will probably ever have, and it just blows me away. Uh, 
and it, it made me, has made me, continues to make me, uh, recognize how little my faith is compared to the faith that they have. Uh, people with nothing, they're getting ready to go out in 10 degree weather with the wind chill and they're looking forward to a good day. God is walking with me. We'll be all right, Mark. And I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to work on my faith here. God is with me. I don't spend a great deal of time worrying about reward or punishment for that matter. Um, it is what it is. You do what you can do and you do it. And you hope that it is blessed. You hope that it will bear good. But we really, I really don't focus on what the harvest is. I just focus on sowing. Um, wonderful line from T.S. Eliot poem. I, you know, take no thought of the harvest. Focus only on proper sowing. So that's what I try to focus on. I, is it the right thing to do? Can I do it? I do it. And then it's, it's in God's hand. The, the outcome is not in my hand. I would say, do it. If you want to dive, walk to the end of the diving board and jump. Don't, don't keep walking around the diving board, counting the steps up. Don't keep, do it, just do it. If it's for you, you'll feel it. If it's not for you, maybe it's something else. God is not going to ask us to do something that we're not good at or that we can't do. It's, I don't think it works that way. I think the Spirit moves us to do something that either we need to do to learn or that we can already do and just haven't been doing it. So it's, it's getting, rid, getting rid of that fear Fear is useless. You hear that in sacred scripture all the time. Fear is useless. Trust and do. Time, our talents, our treasure are three resources at our commands, at our command. I think another important resource is prayer. Um, and then there are the actions that we're called. The love, the service, the devotion. Um, a lot of our service can become devotion. It, it is devotion. Our treasure is maybe not just money, but it may be other things, things. But life is about people and creation and God and the relationship of all of that. And worrying about, is it worth my time or is it a waste of time? Is this a waste of money? Is it... Uh, don't worry. If it's the right thing to do, do it. God will make it right. And it's not for us to make those decisions anyway. Right? It's really... You know, it's really... God will take care of the result. What we have to do is the proper action. And Giving of time, giving of talent, giving of financial resources uh, are all things that we can do. Some have more resources than others, but at the same time, uh, do what you can do and don't worry about it.
Don't worry about is it enough, is it not enough. The Spirit will tell you. If you look at the sacred scriptures of Buddhism, Hinduism, of Islam and Muslim, Jewish, Christian, any of the world's major faith traditions, they all emphasize the care of people who cannot care for themselves. Care for people who lack the resources essential for life. Um, so anyone professing to live in any of those faith traditions would have to confront that. If you see suffering, there's one way you're supposed to respond, with compassion. If you see injustice, respond by seeking justice. Um, if you happen to be agnostic or atheist and don't believe in any of those religions, we have documents like the Universal Direct Declaration of Human Rights. You know, there are human rights that every human being no matter what their state or status or why their state of status, they are still human rights and they deserve to have them. And we should all be working to make sure. So whether it's from a faith tradition or a purely recognition of a common humanity, uh, these things are important. Uh, if I have been blessed with more resources to share, I share them. Certainly those who come after us are going to face some challenges that we haven't faced. Uh, but they're probably also mostly going to be facing the same problems that have been going on since the dawn of human history. Uh, problems of greed, problems of selfishness, problems of oppression, problems of injustice, exploitation. These things go on and on and on, decade after decade, millennium after millennium, war and peace and lots of things are going on uh, and will go on. But what I've seen, not just in our children, but in the families of many people who have worked at the shelter the last 30 years I've been with it. Uh, their children are growing up with good values. They understand this. It's part of their lives already, deeply ingrained in them. Uh, and so I'm hopeful. We're called to be a people of hope, and, uh, and we need to be that. God will step up to the plate in every generation. I have no doubt that she will be there.